Student responsibilities. The student is responsible on a daily basis at the clinical site for tracking their daily skills. They are accountable to track everything that they're engaged with, be it um, an IV, airway management, a patient assessment, listening to lung sounds, checking vital signs. So the student is accountable for documenting and tracking all of those experiences. They're also responsible for being on time to the clinical site. And I can't stress that enough. We want them on time to the clinical sites. And I know many of you help support us in this, and we have no problem with you sending the students home if they're late to clinical. They should also be dressed as professionals at all times. And that goes along with being on time. So when they show up, we want them dressed appropriately. If you see something inappropriate about their dress, if they're not looking professional, that's a critical aspect in the learning that they need to develop. And we also encourage you to send them home for not being dressed appropriately. They're responsible for completing all clinical documentation. So the student has to document and track all of the time that they spend there. They have an hour form, tracking form that they have to complete. They also have to complete an evaluation, uh, self-evaluation, an evaluation that you're going to complete on them. And they also have to write a PCR for their patient contacts, a patient care report. And they have to track their skills. And this is a part of the student's responsibility. They have to remain present and actively engaged during the entire rotation. It's not acceptable that the student be sleeping at a clinical site unless it's a 24-hour site and that has been pre-approved that they can go to sleep at nighttime. When they're on at the clinical site for a 12-hour clinical, they should not be sleeping. In downtime, when you are resting and you're sleeping, that student should be studying, completing documentation, uh, checking out the unit, checking out the equipment, but actively engage during the entire rotation. The student should abide by facility and program clinical rules and policies. They should be uh, just like uh, the employee will have to do. They should have to follow the same policies. So ensure that these students uh, are following any kind of policies and program, I mean, uh, site responsibilities. The student must perform to appropriate skill knowledge and level. They cannot perform above their skill level. I know a lot of times um, uh, students, EMT basic students may come back and tell me that someone asked if they wanted to start an IV. And to me, the student probably did not communicate clearly when they first got there what it was that they were eligible and able to do. So the student should not perform above any skill level. Um, and we want them to communicate clearly when they get there what their skill level is. The student should be prepared for the clinical day and demonstrate professionalism throughout the entire experience. If you have a student who is not demonstrating professionalism, this is not an acceptable behavior. And we definitely want you to address that behavior in a professional way and uh, uh, manage that as, as necessary. And please contact us with those situations. We want the student to be responsive and respectful at all times to the preceptor and service representatives. They should represent themselves appropriately and professionally, represent the school professionally, and they absolutely should be respectful to you at all times. And that is, that's not an optional behavior. The student must assume responsibility for understanding the requirements of this practical experience and they must fulfill those clinical objectives while they're at the clinical site. And a lot of times students um, uh, are challenged with this aspect of understanding what's expected of them. Even though it's clearly described to them before they go to clinicals and there's plenty of resources for them to understand this, sometimes they just lose track of what their responsibility is. Maybe they've gone to a lot of clinicals and they're starting to get tired and it's getting near the end and so they start to slack off. We want you to help us to ensure that these students are fulfilling this responsibility. The student is also responsible for maintaining open communication with the preceptor um, to promote uh, achievement of the clinical objectives. We want to make sure that our students 
are communicating with you, that they, they're letting you know what it is that they need to do and what they need to accomplish. Um, and they should be aware of that. Sometimes a student may need some guidance from you as a preceptor to help guide them in the right way. That's why we're providing you with some resources uh, that can help you understand what their objectives are. Um, but please help to ensure that, and they should ensure that themselves. The student is also responsible for recognizing their limitations and for seeking assistance when it's appropriate. Um, we don't want our students performing inappropriately in the field. And if there is a limitation, they should be able to recognize that immediately. Maybe it's a understanding a, an assessment process. Maybe it's understanding a simple skill like vital signs as a new EMT basic. How do you assess that blood pressure driving down the road? What things should they do to improve that skill? That might be an example of their limitation. And they should ask you. They shouldn't spend a long time not being able to assess the blood pressure and not communicating that to you that they're struggling with that. They should also seek and participate in opportunities to acquire certain skills, those psychomotor skills, appropriate for their level. So if their skill level allows them to ventilate a patient with the bag valve mask, then we would want that student to seek out that opportunity not to stand there and just watch someone else do it. They should seek out that opportunity. Or if it's to do compressions uh, on a patient in cardiac arrest, we would want that student to seek out that opportunity. Um, sometimes they may need a little nudging in that direction, but they should be seeking out those opportunities. The student should be professional, responsible, and respectful. And I've already touched on this before, but it's important enough to say again. They should be professional, responsible, and respectful at all times. They must also be accountable for their own actions and their decisions. In other words, when they make a decision or they take an action, they own it, just like EMS professionals do when they're caring for patients. So any decision or action that a student may take, they will own that decision and are accountable for that decision and should be held accountable for those decisions and questioned on the decisions that they're making. And they must also actively participate in the evaluation process. Evaluation is critical, and I can't express that enough. Evaluation from the preceptor to the student and the student's self-evaluation of themselves, looking at their performance and evaluating the quality of their performance.